Segment Routing Marker Loop Avoidance. My name is Chris Mickelson. Microloops are transient packet loops that occur in a network during network convergence. These microloops are causing packet loss in out of order packets. Microloops occur because convergence following a topology change does not happen at the same time on each node in the network. A microloop can occur for a link up event as well as for a link down event. Segment routing can be used to prevent such microloops to occur. This is the topology we will use to demonstrate the microloop avoidance functionality using segment routing. The link between node 3 and node 6 has a metric of 50, while the other links have a metric of 10. We are looking at traffic going from node 3 to node 9, as indicated by the blue line. During the demonstration, we will bring up a link between node 6 and node 7. When the link between node 6 and node 7 is brought up, the shortest path from node 3 to node 9 follows the path via node 1, node 2 and node 7, as indicated by the green line. Depending on the convergence order of the different nodes in the topology, microloops can occur on the indicated links. The FIP entry for the loopback prefix of node 9, 1.1.1.9/32, is indicated next to the nodes. Initially, the FIP entries have next hops for the topology without a link node 6 to node 7, and the traffic from node 3 to node 9 traverses the link between node 3 and node 6. Now the link between node 6 and node 7 comes up. Node 3 converges first, which results in a microloop between node 3 and node 1. Then node 1 converges, resulting in a microloop between node 1 and node 2. Then node 2 converges, with a microloop between node 2 and node 7. And then finally node 7 converges and the microloop is solved. In the demo, we will help the worst case convergence order by configuring different SPF backoff delays on the different nodes. This way the convergence order is first node 3, then node 1, then node 2, and then finally node 7. To illustrate the behavior, we will send traffic at the rate of 1000 packets per second from node 3 to node 9 using a traffic generator. When the traffic is started, we will bring up the link between node 6 and node 7. Then we will count the number of packets lost due to the microloop. The number of lost packets will be equal to the loss of connectivity duration in milliseconds. Without microloop avoidance, the expected loss in this demo is about 1.5 seconds, since that is the SPF delay that we have configured on node 7. On the traffic generator, I have configured a 1000 packets per second traffic stream from node 3 to node 9. The traffic is IP traffic. The traffic stream is now running, all packets are received, no packets were lost. I now go on the console of node 6 and bring up the interface to node 7. Going back to the traffic generator to stop the traffic stream. About 1400 packets are lost, which comes down to a loss of connectivity duration of about 1.5 seconds. Remember that this loss is artificially increased by modifying the SPF delay. Real loss may not be as large, but it could be. Now that we have seen the packet loss caused by a microloop, we will see how segment routing microloop avoidance can prevent the microloop from occurring. After the link between node 6 and node 7 comes up, node 3 computes that a microloop on a new topology is possible. Instead of updating the forwarding table with the new forwarding entries, node 3 builds a loop-free SRTE policy path to the destination using a list of segments. In this example, node 3 imposes the following SIT list. First, the prefix SIT of node 7, which is 16007, and the adjacency SIT from node 7 to node 6. From there, the packets go to their destination. This SRTE policy carries the traffic on the post-convergence path to the destination without risk of a microloop. For a period of time, long enough to complete convergence of the network, node 3 steers the traffic to node 9 
on this dynamically created SRTE policy. Then Node 3 updates its forwarding table for the new topology. The microloop avoidance functionality is enabled on Node 3 by configuring microloop avoidance segment routing. The RIP delay, which is the period of time the node waits before updating its forwarding table and stops using the microloop avoidance policy, is configurable. In the demo we configure this period to be 30 seconds to give us enough time to look at the SRTE forwarding constructs. For the demo, a thousand packets per second traffic stream is started from node 3 to node 9. We will bring up the link between node 6 and node 7 and then quickly look at the forwarding entry of 1.1.1.9 on node 3. I have restarted the traffic stream. All packets are received, no packets were lost. I now go on the console of node 6 and bring up the interface to node 7. And now quickly looking on node 3 to see how traffic to node 9 is steered. We see how traffic is steered on the SRTE policy 1007 that is dynamically created. The path of this SRTE policy has a first hop and then two segments, the prefix segment to node 7 and the adjacency segment from node 7 to node 6. After the configured delay, traffic is forwarded using the regular forwarding on the new path to node 9. Going back to the traffic generator to stop the traffic stream. No packets are lost, which means that the microloop has successfully been avoided. Microloops are causing packet loss during network convergence. They can occur for both linked up and linked down events in a network. We have seen in this demo how segment routing can automatically prevent these microloops to occur by temporarily steering the traffic on a loop free path while the network converges. Visit us for more segment routing information at cisco.com and segment-routing.net Thank you for watching this video.